Let's explore this now. Minecraft, it might be a game that you're very familiar with. You might play it, you might have kids, grandchildren who play it. Th this year, later this year, Mojang, the company who owns uh, Minecraft or who are behind Minecraft, I think it's owned by Microsoft now, they're launching an update called Better Together, which means gamers on different platforms will be able to play together. Minecraft are adding public servers as well, so more children could end up playing with people they don't know. Now, they do have safety measures in place, but it will be up to parents to make sure they have the right security settings. Andy Robertson is a gaming journalist and runs Family Gamer TV on YouTube. Hi, Andy. Hello. Uh, explain what is going to be different, what's new about this update. Well, Minecraft's obviously a very popular game, and because of that, it's existed on a whole wide range of different platforms. And this is the first step of Mojang and Microsoft bringing those together and essentially creating a new version of Minecraft that will be playable on all the platforms and so it can talk to each other. So whether you're playing on Xbox or PC, you can share an online world. And that's potentially where some of the controversy is because that opens more players to play with each other. Right, at the moment you can, of course, play with people you don't know on the same platform, but this is just opening up that opportunity further. Is that yeah, right? and the experience has been different on consoles and PC and home computers. Um, so on the consoles, it was more of a sort of restrained experience. The people you'd come into contact would be your friends on that console already. But this version, by bringing in these um, online servers that already exist on PC and other platforms, means that console players, when the update goes live, will be able to um, play those games and interact with those people. So it's kind of, it's functionality that's always been there, but it's now going to be available more easily and to a wider group of people. Uh, does this happen automatically, this access, or do you have to actively opt into it? So it's part of this, this new game. And so if you've got the current game of Minecraft, that will remain unchanged. And so you'd have to opt in and essentially download this new version. But that will be the version going forward. So if you've got kids in the family, this is the version they're going to want to play going forward because this is where the new updates are going to be. This is where the excitement of Minecraft is going to be um, as the game is developed in the coming months and years. As a responsible parent then, what do you need to know? What do you need to do to ensure your children aren't um, exposed to undue risk? Yeah, so I think a, a sensible thing to do is before loading any new game is to play it yourself, have, have that experience so you know the sorts of things that the kids are going to be able to okay. do in whoa, the game. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, <laughs> I can't. I'm rubbish. I wouldn't have a clue. I can barely hold the thing that you hold to control a game. What's it called? The, the, so that you're, it depends, depends what you're playing it. It might be on, on a tablet. <laughs> the controller. Yeah. 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 Okay, all right. Yes. So, so if, if, if I if you, can't play the game, what do I do? I think you sit down with your child and you, you play, you, you watch them play the game. And so you, you're playing it together. Then sort of beyond the sort of the common sense stuff, there's the you can do some technical stuff, which is check the parental control. So every system has an area called parental controls and you can then turn off different aspects of how your child or how you are interacting online. So if you're concerned with who they might talk to, you could turn off chat, you could turn off other player communication. And in this case, you could potentially just say limit multiplayer to only play with friends, which is a key setting, because that means that they're only going to be able to play with people in these Minecraft servers that they already know and have connected with in their console And those limitations, already. they're quite easy to do and, and can't be overridden. Are they password controlled? That's right. That's, it's part of the parental controls on these systems. And so as a parent, you do need to set up a password. But once you've done that, then the child can't override mm. um, the settings that you set up. You know, I think the problem is like that for people like me and maybe others, you know, the half hour they're on the Xbox is like, OK, that's my half hour relief. I don't want to be sitting down and playing on it with them. But I guess maybe I just need to be a bit better informed about these things. The, the other thing, I mean, this is, of course, not the only game to which children are exposed to playing with strangers. Clash of Clans is a really big one at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, so there's a whole range of games online. And that is, it's just a big trend that kids enjoy that interaction of playing with different people because it's just more fun playing with a human being rather than just playing with a computer opponent. And so, again, all these games really being present um, in that play space and maybe having games being played in shared family areas rather than away in bedrooms is a really sensible idea for parents. Yeah, OK. I feel like I need you just to come round to my house and explain it all, Andy, to be honest. <laughs> if you have some free time at any stage. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Andy Robertson, who is a gaming journalist and runs the Family Gamer TV channel on YouTube.